All right, everybody, welcome to Ring Respect Radio. I am Bobby Munson, joined as always with my co-host, my video bro, Papa Smokes, and we want to thank our special guest at this time. He is the stretcher, Robert Martyr. Welcome to Ring Respect Radio, sir. How you doing? We're doing wonderful. Thank you for being a guest at this time. Uh, Papa Smokes and I have been watching some of your work as of late. I've uh, seen you a couple appearances on MLW Fusion Television, which uh, caught our attention. We've been doing a lot of reviews and recaps. And uh, Bob Smokes himself was uh, talking very highly of you on our last show about uh, the match that you had with King Mo there and everything like that. We thought we'd reach out and uh, get you to join the show. We get do a little interview with you, talk to you about your career and uh, some of the things that led you up to this point of it so far. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, starting on the topic of MLW Fusion there, uh, we've seen a couple of appearances. Uh, you versus uh, Calvin Tankman in episode 111 and then with King Mo in 129. Were there any, any other times you've worked with MLW yet so far? Or was this your first uh, venture into working with them? Um, this was actually my first time um, working with either one of them, especially King Mo. Um, uh, I had been in locker rooms with uh, Tankman before, um, but this was the first time uh, we had ever gotten in the ring together. Okay. Perfect. Uh, where did some of your career start out? Uh, where were some of the first uh, companies that you've worked for so far? Um, say that one more time. Oh, so, uh, what were some of the companies prior to MLW that you've uh, wrestled for? Where are some of your mainstays in the business right now? Um, Limitless Wrestling, um, which is a promotion that's really, really booming right now. Limitless Wrestling, um, Acting Wrestling in Georgia is, is something I've, I've really done a lot of good work there. And um, Paradigm Pro Wrestling is something I've, I've, I've done a lot. Um, Calvin Tankman actually came from Paradigm Pro Wrestling, um, as such as many others. So it's really cool. Myron Reed as well. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah, you'd sent us a few matches to watch over. i uh, got to say, wasn't too familiar with Action Wrestling or UWFI at PPW. But man, after especially seeing the stuff in PPW, UWFI, very excited about what we saw there. Very uh combat style based and point based which we loved absolutely watching uh i thought your match with dominic garini was phenomenal in every sense of the word uh tell us a little bit more about uh your work there and uh maybe a little bit more about that company but just out of interest of how they uh, run things in their ring so um myron reed is actually currently the paradigm heavyweight champion so um he he's been their 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 guy for a while um, as far as the style, UWFI comes from uh, the original UWF that was created by uh, Satoru Sayama, or the original Tiger Mask. Um, and that, that entire, um, I guess that entire rule set basically created modern MMA in Japan. Um, it's the reason why Pride Fighting Championships was a thing, because the guys from the original UWF and the UWFI um, uh, they take, they basically took the rules and just made a little bit of changes and that's how modern MMA was born. So, um, that whole rule set, that whole point system is really exciting because it's, it's very non-traditional. It's very, uh, combat sports based amateur wrestling, catch wrestling, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, uh, uh, boxing, you know, Muay Thai, anything you want to put in there. It's, it's really, a, a again, a, not to make a pun out of it, but a catch is catch can of styles. Um, and it's really becoming paradigm's mainstay uh paradigm has been around i want to say since 2014 or 2015 and they've been doing a lot of stuff in southern indiana some of the best wrestling i've watched i was a fan when i started so um yeah paradigm for wrestling is doing some great stuff especially on um, iwtv which is the independent wrestling network perfect man uh uh, I just uh, I wanted to say thanks a lot for coming on the show. First of all, Robert, uh, just loving having you on the on Ring Respect Radio. Uh, secondly, I, I after watching some of your matches uh, in Florida, there I wanted to uh, say that I really impressed with your uh, scientific wrestling style, as we used to call it in the seventies and eighties. Um, the scientific style, really, really well trained. Obviously, an amateur background and all that. Um, how did you come to uh, uh, meld the styles of amateur wrestling with uh, pro wrestling? Um, so obviously, you know, it's, it's no secret that uh, amateur wrestling has had a rich history in pro wrestling. You know, obviously Kurt Angle and, 
you know, uh, man, I can name so many guys that people don't even know that were phenomenal amateur wrestlers. Um, but when I started wrestling at 14, um, I had just taken up amateur wrestling. So while I was doing pro wrestling and learning that craft, I was also doing ma- amateur wrestling. So there were days that, you know, um, I'd have an amateur match at 1 PM and then later in the night I'd be wrestling at eight. So, um, you know, it really came hand in hand with me as far as it wasn't just, I was an amateur wrestler. Then I went into pro wrestling. I was doing both at the same time. Um, but I guess my goal has been, uh, using amateur wrestling as a tool, um, to basically enhance, you know, uh, technical wrestling, because there's so many, if you watch a, a lot of world of sport, the British stuff, it's beautiful work, beautiful, beautiful work, beautiful style, very smooth, very crisp. But if you take the ruggedness of amateur wrestling and use those transitions and add that to uh, that world of sports style, I think it's a style nobody's done. So I'm, I'm, I've been do- working hard to advance on that. Really awesome. Yeah, and I know uh, on social media recently, uh, you had posted a picture of yourself from a couple of years ago compared to today. Looks like you've been through a very heavy regimen in order to uh, get yourself in the uh, tip-top shape that you're in. Uh, uh, talk a little bit about that. Uh, what kind of uh, regimen did you do in order to get yourself prepared for the ring as of today? So um, that photo that, that you're referring to is from about two years ago. And um, I was rest. that was my senior year of high school and I was in the worst shape of my life. Um, I had just wrestled, um, in the finals of regionals for, uh, Florida, um, in my, uh, you know, in my state. And basically I had shot in and my opponent, I had taken a a double leg shot and I pulled my hamstring and through that I injured my back. So, um, you know, I was injured, I was hurt and I just, you know, I didn't lift any weights. Um, but the regimen I, I eventually followed, I took it from, uh, actually, uh, Davey Richards, uh, regimen. He had posted it on Twitter and I started doing the, the deck of cards workout that, you know, every, you know, grappler has to do, um, which is basically you take a, you know, a deck of cards, obviously. And let's say you have an ACE, um, you're going to be doing however many, uh, you know, how many, however many uh, hearts you have on, on the card and you just keep going to the deck of cards is through and then you do it twice more. So I, I did that um, off workout. So let's say um, three hearts was 15 burpees. So and I would just do that. And um, I lost 20 pounds originally and then I worked my way up um, and then COVID hit, unfortunately. So all of the gyms were closed and I just. I wouldn't let myself get back in that shape. So I just ran, ran, man, I ran six, seven miles almost every day, six, seven miles just to keep shedding weight. And then, you know, just doing home workouts with my dad. And that's what got me in that real good shape. And once everything opened up, I hit the gym hard. Here I am. I lost, um, I think 45 pounds in total. Yeah. 45. Jesus. Now that I think about it, that's crazy. (laughs) Well, that's really incredible, man. Uh, you did mention about uh, the COVID shutdown uh, being a bit of a setback. Uh, how did that set back your career? Uh, what kind of effects did that have on your in-ring abilities and being uh, available for bookings at the time? So, um, believe it or not, my 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 big, um, not resurgence, but my me coming up in the ranks in wrestling actually happened during the COVID era. So as soon as things started to open up just slightly, I was in rings training. I had found a way I knew a friend that had a ring in his, in his, in his garage. So I trained there and then, you know, it just kept going and going until um, paradigm actually sent out um, a uh, flyer saying, if you have amateur rack bound or, or, or uh, some type of uh, combat sports background, we are hosting um, a UWFI contender series tournament or, or some type of uh, show basically showcasing these these wrestlers that have legit backgrounds and i had sent in my application and this is when you know covid was for real like nobody could leave nobody was training everybody was locked down and they had done it in um what they call in the the arena in jeffersonsville and it was what everybody was masked up like there was no people it was just the ring and just film and uh that's how i got my big break was wrestling a guy by the name of matthew justice 
And that happened during the COVID era. And ever since then, since COVID happened, I consistently wrestled more and more. I, I think I've traveled to at least 10 different states since October of last year to now, which is I never thought I would be doing that a year from now. I mean, I mean, a, a year ago. So uh, with travel in the States right now, how is, how's that working out? Is everything kind of generally opened up now or slowly starting to open up? Because it it is a much different story here in Canada, especially where we're from. So I'm kind of curious a bit more about that. So I've heard, you know, I have a lot of friends that are wrestlers in Canada and it's, it's bad. You you guys can't do anything. And I feel for you guys, you know? Um, And also there's that five-year ban that everybody's terrified of. So like, again, I feel for you guys over here. It's, dude it's everything's starting to open up it's almost back to normal at this point as far as wrestling goes you know um i don't know if you you're you're too familiar with the independent scene but there's a good joey janela from AEW has a big show um every year called spring break and that sold out like capacity so that was around what 600 almost 700 people um that sold out so you know that's almost that's essentially what we were getting before the covid era um, as far as the big shows, so it, it's almost back to normal. Um, flights are cheap because nobody's flying, so you know I can get a trip to New York for sixty dollars. So it helps me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, I believe that uh, show that you're mentioning there. We've had a few of the guys that work in our area that have been down to Joey's show before. Uh, in particular, Michael Richard Blaze, who was a mainstay down there about a, a couple of years ago. But I mean, again, yeah, you're. A lot of the guys out here, they can't travel. We can't do shows. I mean, we have a company of our own, Prairie Pro Wrestling, that, uh, I mean, we're, we've been grounded for a year and a half. We can't do anything even, I mean, we could do a no fans thing, but again, there's a lot of travel for a lot of different wrestlers, uh, especially when you live in such a sparse area and everything gets just financially, it's not there. So I'm glad to see that it is happening for you in the States. I'm glad to see that you're able to get traveling a little bit more and get through with that. And I mean, as a fan, I'm really excited to see fans back in arenas as well, too, because watching wrestling behind those closed doors, a little frustrating. Uh, fans make it more exciting. I'm sure uh, Papa Smokes could agree there. Uh, anything else you want to add there, Papa Smokes? No, no, it just, uh, yeah, talking about COVID is just such a drag because uh, our company was just getting off the ground. Like you say, we've been closed for year and a half now the fans here are just salivating for some wrestling action but by law we can't even put it on yet so uh we're not at the level that florida's at yet but uh hoping so that it's kind of looking good for this summer at least and uh keeping the fingers crossed yeah uh if i might add to that like um honestly it's it's weird because um everyone's (laughs) flocked certain places um because while covid was really really bad and nobody in the world could get out um indiana was the spot so that's why everybody flocked to indiana and now jersey is opening up so now everybody wants to go to you know new jersey and wrestle there and that's a big hot spot and now texas is opening back up so texas is a big hot spot any really any place that's you know a, a big uh hot spot has been a place that's opened or early that everybody wants to wrestle at because everybody's so um, desperate, <laughs> we'll be honest, desperate to wrestle that they'll, they'll go any place, you, you know, they can go. So um, like Texas arenas that usually wouldn't sell out are selling out. So it, it's, it's a weird, this whole era, this whole, you know, past year and a half year, it's been so weird. It's been such a drag because there, there's been so many promotions that were really getting off the ground, especially in the States that were really starting to pick up that just got hit with COVID and, you know, who knows what's going to happen with that. So unfortunately, COVID really did it to us. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get back off the ground. For sure. Uh, speaking of the independent scene, have you ever uh, ventured outside of the States for your work before? And uh, where have you worked? Um, so as far as out of the States, I've unfortunately never wrestled. I've trained outside of the States. Um, I've trained uh, in, in I've actually trained with, in Canada. Um, I don't know if you guys know of IWC. But I've trained over there um, at IWC in, in Canada and in, uh, Quebec, I think. I think it's in Quebec. I'm not sure. Montreal. No, I'm sorry. Montreal. Yeah, Montreal um, is Quebec. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, actually, now that I think about it, yes, it is. Um, please don't clip that. <laughs> All right. You got it. But, <laughs> I'm joking. You can put that in. Um, but like, 
Yeah. Um, honestly, unfortunately, I, I haven't wrestled outside of the States. I really wish I, I, I get that opportunity once everly, everything finally opens up. There's so many promotions. There's so many uh, uh, regions, especially like, man, Canada was a goal for mine, a goal of mine for um, since I started, honestly, because I would see Smash Wrestling. I'd see, you know, C4 and, and all these great promotions just, you know, packed, packed out. And, and, you know, guys like Mike Bailey, you know, really the flag bearers of, 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 you know, Canadian independent wrestling, just having uh, fantastic matches. And uh, I wanted to be a part of that. So it really sucks that uh, I haven't gotten to really uh, get to work in Canada. Well, if you uh, do make your round through Canada, you know who to call. We'll uh, set you up here in Saskatchewan for sure. Uh, Absolutely. Out our way. So. Uh, Papa Smokes, uh, you want to take the floor for a minute? Yeah, okay. Well, I was just thinking of also about uh, going back to the COVID shutdown time. We all had a bunch of extra uh, time on our hands. And I was going back through uh, a lot of old archival wrestling footage from days gone by, which I always do anyway. But uh, during shutdown, I had a lot of extra time to do that. I'm guessing by watching your matches, Robert, that you also do that. It looks like you've watched a lot of the greats from the past. I see... Uh, I see uh, Lord Stephen Regal in your style. I see the hearts, uh, the Owen Hart in your style. Uh, what what kinds of old um, matches and old uh, wrestlers do you like to watch when you go back into the archives? Um, for sure, my number one is Harley Race. Every single time, oh, Harley yeah. Race was was my guy, and it still is my guy. He's my number one. I actually, um, if, uh, if you watched that uh, Ashton Star match I had on Friday that I I sent you guys. I'm wearing Harley's boots from 77. I got them custom made to be his boots um, that he wore against Jumbo Saruta in, in, in 1977, defending the NWA title in Japan for the first time. So like that, that Harley race is number one. Um, I love watching me some Bobby Eaton. Bobby Eaton is one of the best oh, ever. Yeah. Eddie, Eddie Gilbert, Arn Anderson, uh, Magnum TA. I could talk about Tolly Blanchard for forever. There's so many guys that I've, I, I've during that COVID shutdown that I really sat down and, and started to appreciate. Uh, my biggest one that I found was Brad Armstrong. Brad Armstrong was one of the best ever that I've ever seen. He mm. could go with anybody, and the, it sucks because the only the only little piece that he was missing was was that just that charisma. But he was just such a good wrestler that it was almost hard to deny. Um, Man, uh, honestly, uh, Chavo Guerrero Sr., I watched him in Mexico. I found some old tapes of that. Uh, man, I could go on and on, guys, literally. Um, there, there's so many so many guys that are, are so underappreciated, like Manny Fernandez. I don't know if you guys have heard of Manny Fernandez, the Raging Bull. That guy was the best. Nick Bockwinkle, Billy Robinson. Again, I could go on forever, but those guys have been the guys that have really sat down and appreciated and watched, especially when you see them um, in the shorter matches, not the, not the 40 minute classics. That were <clears throat> known. Um, especially um, I'm trying to think of his name right now, um, especially watching uh, uh, Arn's five minute matches in NWA, like five minutes, really, really, really short matches. But if you look at the quality of work that they get done in five minutes, it's ridiculous. Um, Fit Finley especially fit Finley and, and his time in Germany. Um, man, dude, uh, classic stuff, classic stuff. Negro Casas from Mexico. I watch everything, man. I, I watch everything from Japan to Germany to, to Ireland. I've seen some I Irish wrestling, some British wrestling, really anything I could get my hands off. I watch and study and I can't tell you how many notebooks I have of, of just notes and notes and notes and notes of just matches. You see, and that's, all that's good. so good to you. Oh, sorry, right, Bob. Sorry, I was just going to You go ahead, man. No, it's okay. I just wanted to uh, express appreciation about that. Uh, Bobby Munson and I both big fans of vintage wrestling. Uh, we we both uh, kind of long for the old days in the state that the business is in now in, in some uh, large areas. But uh, really good to see um, a young guy such as yourself uh, uh, giving great respect to the uh, – great grapplers of the past and uh bringing that into your style for today it gives me hope for the future of the business when a young guy like you is watching the good stuff yeah and it, i mean it's it's a testament to what you do too because i mean we caught your work on mlw fusion where you're in there in these uh 
quick matches with Tankman and King Mo. But what you did in that, that short period of time was enough to catch our attention, make us realize the kind of influences that you have and how we wanted to be able to interview somebody that respects the business in the same way that we do as fans too. And absolutely. I mean, honestly, you know, how can you not? There's so many things you can learn just by watching the people that came before you. And I know, especially with this era of wrestling, that the whole, the whole narrative is that this it's been, it's new kids on the block. It's, we're the guys that are going to do the things that the guys before us didn't do. And we're going to change the wrestling business through that. And I respect that mindset. Honestly, I do. But I think that the the gap that people are missing nowadays, especially is, is really just watching these, these classic matches, these guys that in, day in and day out, put their souls into the matches, every little thing, every little detail, every bit of intent that they would uh, you, you know, using their in their matches is something that I, I wholeheartedly think is missing today. And that's what I try to emulate. I try to emulate the little stuff. I try to be I try to be good at the little stuff better than everybody else. And I think if I can do that, um, I'll be very successful. So couldn't agree with you more. It definitely shows in your work. Um, that's uh, pretty much what I had for for us today. Uh, Pop Smokes, any last questions that you have for Robert here? No, I'm good, but it's been an extreme pleasure talking to you, Robert. Thanks for uh, coming on our podcast, and uh, best of luck in the future. We'll be watching you uh, intently, and uh, best of luck to you. Yeah, we will uh, let everybody know about you. Uh, before we go, though, is there anything else you want to add uh, where people can find you next? Any uh, matches you got coming up you want to mention on the show here today? Um, so you can catch me at Limitless Wrestling. I'm actually – we're doing a taping this weekend. Um, probably one of the biggest matches of my career. Um, so we'll definitely watch out for that. But uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at the stretcher RM um, and on Instagram at death to martyr. Um, and yeah, man, I honestly, and if you're just a fan, of, if you don't even want to watch my work, if you're just a fan of good old professional wrestling, I post it on my Twitter all the time, breakdowns and, and things I, 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 I like and enjoy. So if you're a fan of old wrestling too, make sure to check that out. Awesome. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you for being on Ring Respect Radio. And uh, we just want to tell everybody, go check out the work of Robert Martyr. Fantastic in ring performer. Thank you very much, sir. Breeze. Thank you. When you go to the old saloon at the Dead South End, gonna find you a man there wants to be old.
Fake.